Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got the Taurus GX4 on the table. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis X and Core Belts. You'll find a link that you can sign up for Big Daddy Unlimited. They actually have things in stock and usually at a lower price than other places. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links. It will often save you money, never will cost you any additional money, and helps the channel. Thank you. This is the one that we showed a couple weeks ago where we just took it out of the box. Of course it is unloaded. We did get a chance to take it to the range. And one thing I kind of want to call out early on, we'd had a little problem with this where the takedown screw on this was set incorrectly when we got it. The gun self disassembled and we doing a test fire and it didn't reset. So I had to manually reset it. So at that point I was thinking that the information that it might self reset was incorrect. However, I, after I took it to the range, when I went to clean it, it began working very smoothly and did self-reset. So I'm just going to consider that break-in period. I give all these little guns a pass on break-in periods, so I'm just going to count that as the same thing. So if you happen to see that original video where I mentioned that, that problem's gone at this point, so I'm going to move on from there. So the gun itself is it's in that single stack and a half that's become very popular. So you've got a double stack down at the bottom and a single stack at the top. And what they usually do on all these different types of guns is they make the magwell thinner so that you can get more capacity in the same footprint. So you get 11 rounds. It comes with two 11 round magazines with a yellow follower. The magazines fit nice and flush, kind of blend right in. There are two back straps. The one that's on it, it also comes with, so it comes with a small and a large, so it comes with two back straps. And the replaceable back strap on guns in this territory is a little bit less common. A lot of these guns have, they're all fixed. So that's kind of a cool feature. It has some actually really nice texturing. If you look at the texturing on the front strap and then the texturing on the sides, they're very similar to each other, almost identical. The coloration makes it look like this is a different pattern, but it really doesn't feel like a different pattern. And then you have the continuation onto the back. The grip actually kind of from a distance kind of reminds me of the Ruger LCP series just from the shape and the kind of the look of it. But this is not a clone of the LCP. It just kind of has that look. It has dual serrations front and rear. It does not include a Picatinny rail, which this one is shaped where it probably could have, but this is awful short, so you might have a hard time finding an accessory that would actually fit in there. It's got a relatively large trigger guard, leaves room for gloves and it fits nice in your hand. So when you get a hold of it, you get a good grip on it, it does fit comfortably in your hand, and it's got some texture on both sides. There are no ambidextrous features on the gun. The magazine catch is reversible, so you can flip that around. And you're seeing on this side, and I'll flip it back over, the flat face trigger. And it's actually a, a decent trigger. So I'm gonna pop the magazine out here. I'll cycle it. There's actually a relatively short take up, and then about a six pound wall. It is a crisp wall, but it's a nice short wall. No stacking or creep. There's the reset. It's actually a pretty good reset. Just a hair of take up, and you're back on the wall, and then a crisp break. And there's all the way out. And all the way out isn't all that far off the reset, but the overall travel is so short that it really, all the way out or reset, doesn't really make a big difference. It's actually quite a good trigger for one of these little guns and I did find it easy to get back on target with it and stay on target while I was going through the trigger pull. And it does not have double strike capability, so that's one negative. Pull the trigger and now the trigger is dead. That's not a defect, That's most striker guns don't have that capability. And of course trigger pull is important in order to be able to shoot a particular gun accurately. As far as sights go, it has a nice bright uh, white front sight, but unfortunately it has a blackout rear. Now I did find, and you can see here on the picture, there's enough of a gap, put my hand there, there's enough of a gap that you can isolate the white dot up against a target, and despite having the blackout rear sight, I was able to shoot it well, and I was able to find the target and zero in on it. That can make a difference how, if there's a little bit of gap it allows you to find that dot in the target. When they're really tight, they tend to blend together, and it's kind of hard to see if you're offset. 
Now, one thing I did notice, and a couple of us shot it and found the same thing, the sight from the factory is off just a hair to the left. So I had to compensate a little bit. I will straighten the sight out. But I have heard quite a few people having issues with the sights either being not centered or moving. Well, this one's not moving. It's in there nice and solid. So I'll end up using the pusher to move it. But the sight did come from the factory just offset just a hair. And by the way, the trigger is polymer. Now with 11 round capacity, of course this is competing with things like the Hellcat, the P365, the Ruger Max 9, and the Shield Plus. With 11 round capacity, it actually it's a, it pulls ahead of the P365 and is on par with the other ones in this territory. So this is really Taurus's first entry into that you know, very high capacity super subcompact guns. And I think it's a pretty good entry into that market. We found it to be reliable. It worked from beginning to end, you know, ignoring this. It, once we got it to the range, we we'll put live ammo in it and started shooting. It did just work. So it, I do think this has the potential to be a reliable gun. The only one thing we did have on the very last mag we shot, hammer was firing it, and it locked back. So we thought we were done, put the mags down. And when we went to clean up, we found one of the mags still had a round in it. The chamber was empty. It had properly ejected and everything, but we found the round in the mag. At this point, I can't say for sure because we had stopped, put everything down, walked away, and come back exactly what happened there. So I don't know if that was a malfunction or if one of us shooting just pulled the mag before we were done, hit, hit the slide stop for slide release. I'm not sure what. But other than that, we didn't have any issues, and I'm going to kind of have to ignore that one because I, we weren't looking at exactly what was happening around that. So I do think it has the potential to be a decent gun. It has an MSRP of... 399 give or take and right now of course they're selling well over that we actually got lucky and got this for like a dollar more than msrp but right now as things are playing out you know you're this and everything else like it is kind of overpriced but at 399 around msrp it's actually a good gun for the price so overall i kind of like the little thing it's decent looking it's comfortable in the hand and it's small so let's go about the dimensions it's 5.8 from the front to the to the back of the beaver tail or the back of the grip and this is odd manufacturers actually usually don't bother listing the difference the back straps make but it's 6.08 if you put the large back strap on it so that must add quite a decent little hump in fact i've got it right here and you can see if i kind of put it side by side there's a pretty good little hump that that large one is going to add so if you've got large hands and you want to have a bit bigger grip, that's an option available to you. It's 4.4 inches tall. We've got the flush mag in it. So setting it up like that, it's 4.4 inches tall. And it's 1.08 inches thick. So it's a fairly thin gun, fairly small and compact. And it weighs 18.5 ounces with 11 round capacity. Let's go ahead and take the thing apart. Now to take it apart is a little bit twitchy. Now when I took it apart in the original video, I used a screwdriver because I didn't have a spent case. I don't like live ammo on the table when I'm messing cleaning or videoing, so I used a screwdriver. But I saved a piece of brass from the range trip. So to take it apart, all you have to do is turn this a quarter turn, and you can use spent case, and then you have to pull the trigger, and it is a little bit twitchy sometimes to get it to go correctly. You pull the trigger, and then it comes apart. The internal frame that's built into this is stainless steel, as well as the barrel, and the slide assembly is steel alloy. So it's got a nice robust set of rails, full length on the one side and pretty much full length on the other, with the only cutouts being those that are necessary to function. And it's fairly robust in there, pretty well designed. Relatively simple fire control, it does have a drop safety. This little protrusion engages a piston in the slide, pretty consistent with all the others. So it is a drop safe weapon. That would, along with the inertial toggle to prevent inertial trigger pull on the trigger. So it's got all the drop safety characteristics that you would want. It does have a nice solid primer head. I don't know if I'll be able to get the camera to zoom on it, but it's nicely centered and it's good and deep, but it didn't over penetrate. It does have a round tip firing pin captive guide rod and recoil spring assembly and a 3.06 inch conventional rifling barrel. 
with a bit of a target crown, which is unusual on guns in this price territory. You can kind of see the crown there, and you can see the conventional rifling. It's well machined, and no ch tool chatter or any of the other issues that I've seen on some guns. And then the slide is well machined as well. There's the piston for the drop safety. But one thing I'll show you, the ramp is basically machine polished. So it's, an, it's a polished ramp and it's a smooth ramp, but it's not a mirror finish ramp. And this did feed smoothly everything that we were trying to feed it. Drop safety, sear connector back here for the striker, and everything well machined. So for the price that you're going to pay, you're actually getting a decently well done, well machined gun. Reassembly is relatively easy. Get the recoil spring in and of course make sure it's centered. Put it, put it back on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over. So you see that the screw is along the frame. When I pull it back, it resets itself. It didn't do that the first several times I assembled it and disassembled it when we were trying to figure that out, but it's doing it now. So I'll just count that as break in and, and find that even if it did, didn't do it, you could turn it by hand. And of course, you're back in business. So if you're looking for this type of gun, especially if you're a Taurus fan, or you're looking to stay in a reasonable price range, this is probably going to get the job done. And just to put a little bit of perspective, I'll sit the mag in it. And so I've got an unloaded P365. This is just a regular P365. You'll see that it is a little taller than the P365. To demonstrate that better, I'll put the P365 over in front of it. At the front, they're almost equal. At the back, it's a little bit taller, and that's just because of the cant of the magwell in the P365. But for that extra little bit of height that you're picking up, you're picking up a rounded capacity. Length is about the same, and thickness is roughly the same. The P365 is a little bit rounded at the top, which makes it appear thinner than it really is. So the kind of what's become the known standard for this type of gun is the P365. This competes well with it from a size, capacity, and overall dimensions perspective. I didn't expect to find it easy to shoot well because of the blackout rear sight, but it actually was. It was actually easy to pull nice groups. Overall, I kind of like the thing. So if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up. Share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, Instagram, kind of everywhere. And thank you.